On the 22nd and 23rd of May 2012, in Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria, a workshop was held to study the feasibility of the establishment of an ECOWAS Investment Guarantee Reinsurance Agency. The purpose of this study was to help mitigate the risk profile in the region and bolster investment capital offering a window for reinsurance to the insurance industry in ECOWAS. Um, the problematic of foreign direct investment is a very important one and a very interesting one and a very complex one. Um, Africa and uh, West Africa in particular, they have not enjoyed in the recent years very large inflow of foreign investment in, in absolute terms and also in relative terms compared to other emerging regions in the world like Asia and Latin America and also the, the Middle East. The drive had been that uh, all those models need to be identified and tested to see if we can implement them in our environment. And I can tell you that this one that we're talking about today being supported by ECOWAS and EU uh, to establish an agency called Investment Guarantee Agency and Reinsurance. I I'm sure this will go a very long way to give support to investors that want to do investment. The forum was addressed by key players from the major organisations within the African insurance industry. Among these were ATI, MIGA, WICA and Africa RE. The ATI was established by African member states with the World Bank technical and financial support to feed a market failure. The World Bank provided financial and technical support to allow African member states to fund their membership contributions under the Regional Trade Facilitation Project. Mr. Cyprian Sakubu presented on the ATI insurance company. He spoke about the importance of ATI within the insurance industry in Africa, the experience and challenges of the agency, and how ATI could be a key player in the opening of the new ECOWAS agency. Uh, ATI started as a concept uh, at the bank together with partnership of uh, African members. Okay, But the, the bank funded that initial idea in 97. Okay, and, and you know, by 2001, we were there. This is, I think Cyprian has been very clear on this point today. He said, you know, if, if you want to start an agency, please realize it takes time, quite a bit of time, and money, etc. I mean, even for MIGA, MIGA had five years of discussions, 1983 to 1988, before it started. Discussions typically focused on the challenges and difficulties of opening the new agency, and whether it would be better to open a totally new agency or create a partnership with the existing ones? First of all, there was a lot of concentration on the time factor that it takes to establish this thing. Now, is it really an issue of bureaucracy that's causing things to take so long? Or are there other fundamentals that have to be done? The recommendation as I see it is for us to have one big Pan-African body. Now, isn't it better for us to have Comesa Investment Guarantee, ECOWAS Investment Guarantee, SADEC Investment Guarantee, you know, regional-based stuff, rather than concentrating everything on, in one institution? This is about trade and investment. It's not just about investment. And second, when you do trade and investment, it's really important as you mitigate risks to have the suffi sufficient capital behind you in order to leverage and to take on those risks, okay? A single Pan-African institution would be much easier to do that. No single country can cover its own political risks because any entity within any country is subject to political risks. So you need a supranational entity which has the strong governance, which has privilege and diplomatic privilege and immunities, and which has the capacity, the ability to provide a strong security to an international investor. Mr. Omar Sek provided a presentation on the feasibility study of the agency, in which he talked about the services it will provide, location, and the key areas the agency will need to focus on. 
This also included the capital needed in setting up the agency, both as an independent organisation or in partnership with other agencies already operating in the region. So we've come up with three types of services that the agency can hypothetically offer. The first one has to be the core PRI services, you know, without the traditional services that we know. And the second thing that at some point in time ECOWAS has to explore with donor partner like the World Bank, the African Development Bank and the European Investment Bank has to do with exploring the possibility of setting up an infrastructure PRI fund. There is one key barrier is your credibility. Your credibility meaning your rating. If you are not well rated, you cannot enter this market. It's a closed market because it's based on trust. We need a minim, minimal startup capital of 300 million US dollars to start with. So the third option is the ATI option. There you've seen the benefit. I will not go over it again. ATI is already operational has an African, you know, uh, outreach and the partner will, will help enable ECOWAS to save on time. It can be set up like this the next day. Now again, another critical system is the capital base. I mean, I mean, the lifeblood of an insurance company is the quality of this capital. So we have to make sure that if ECOWAS is really set about getting into the PRI business, the capital issue has to be taken care of. You, you, you did not go deep to make any, any preposition. Maybe perhaps it is the sensitive nature of the matter. But I think you are a consultant and you are doing a study and you should come up with options that uh, will help final decision makers. So there ought to be some justification on which is the location. Number two is uh, uh, the issue of fundraising for equity of this uh, proposed organization? For me, there, there are three key areas uh, that struck me quite uh, strongly. Uh, the first one has to do with the business climate issues. Every single report, feasibility study report, every single presentation that I have sat in, this has always been an issue. And political risk has always been highlighted as one of the key uh, elements. Now for the location, in, it is indeed specified in the document. Eh? It is almost one page of proposal in terms of location decision making. We are not talking about uh, commercial risks which are already assumed by general insurance companies. ATI was not formed to compete with uh, insurance companies. ATI was established to provide a complementarity to strengthen existing insurance companies. Okay, I understand the argument on incentives, but don't forget the business. It's about generating the business. It's not about the politics. It's the business. If you're, if you're trying to have a successful, profit-driven organization, it's got to be about the business. So we need to be able to have a situation where we have an efficient, results-oriented mechanism that is easy to follow and easy to implement. I think what we should be doing after the elaborate study we've just heard is how we can bring together these institutions and find a common ground. Why, why start a new baby when we already have one that is up and running? Thank you. You gave us three options. Option one, that's setting up something new. Option two, going with MIGA and uh, some others. And option three, ATI. What I what my brother is saying is that put option two and three together and even expand it. That is that is the that is the option you should be looking at. We will be of help to each other, we will partner each other as Pan Africans or as uh, regional African uh, regional institutions. That for me is better than depending on just one body and all of us putting our interest and our hope and aspiration on one body. Insurance is about pulling the volume together. So if we can pull the volume in one place or in three places, then we can write it. We couldn't do much because we didn't have enough volume. In 1973, a group of insurance practitioners from Ghana, Nigeria, the Gambia, Sierra Leone and Liberia met in Accra 
Ghana to form the West African Insurance Consultative Association with the aim of putting in place structures that will enhance and facilitate the development of the insurance industry in West Africa. In the years following the creation of WICA and in pursuance of their established objectives, the Founding Fathers had the desire to establish a reinsurance organization to help mitigate the effects and the lack of uh, the effects of the lack of reinsurance capacity and its attendant problems within West African insurance industry. We don't see ourselves as competitors. We see ourselves as collaborators. So the issue of partnering is not new to us. So I can, uh, with, with the ECOWAS investment guarantee thing, I can assure you reinsurance companies in the sub-region already have a mindset about partnering. So we have a problem here now. We need this agency. Is it possible also that we can think about placing a certain fund with guidelines, with one group, to manage in a way that it can address the problem that we have? Okay, our mission is to be the reinsurer of choice in Africa and other chosen markets through innovative and capacity building application combined with commitment to customer satisfaction and corporate profitability. It's involved in all classes of reinsurance business, including property, liability, etc. Currently, the one we are working on is index-based insurance. And so definitely political risk and credit risk is an emerging risk that our company will be interested. The visibility study has shown that the option of creating a new institution should not be considered, but rather the initiation of a financial and technical support program for the existing regional institutions. The, government, the era of government having more money than sense is gone. I think people really have more sense than money, which means every one cobble, every one dollar that is spent, uh, somebody wants to ask where is the value in it. I'm aware of the options given regarding political risk and that there should be collaborative mechanism to build our regional capacity to make ECOWAS companies strong enough to write huge political risk cover for FDIs. Fine, he has been very clear. Governments now don't just give money away like that. But then at the same time, what facilitation processes can governments, you know, put in place so that we can easily achieve the results that we're looking for? The government resources is becoming thinner and thinner and the responsibility is enlarging. So uh, we must learn to look away from government investing. They don't have the money. They don't, the resources isn't there. The kind of money the government, any government in West Africa we want to spend is money that will touch the lives of ordinary people now. Provision of housing, cheap housing, provision of infrastructure, amenities and the rest, hospitals, our schools are in tatters and the rest. These are the kind of investment that will enable a government to win elections. Uh, then very briefly I will uh, highlight some uh, main ideas which can be uh, taken as a conclusion, uh, it's quite clear that uh, nobody wants to, let's say, create a new animal. Uh, there was a fear when we talked about creating a new agency, that was the uh, uh, words which were used. Well, it's quite clear that nobody at this point uh, wants that, and uh, uh, there's a strong preference to uh, using existing organization, existing entities. In the political risk insurance, uh, it's quite clear that uh, ATI, African Trade Insurance, uh, will have to play a very important role. And uh, as uh, just mentioned, this has been uh, discussed uh, before and during the lunch break. And the conclusions of the, uh, those discussions uh, will be improved upon and built upon uh, so as to be incorporated into our final report. Uh, next idea which uh, was highlighted this afternoon and which I found quite uh, uh, of very great significance was the penetration rate. Another important point would be ethical insurance. Uh, 
uh, ethical insurance, which is very important in order to um, increase uh, the penetration rate and in turn the capitalization rate. There's always a source of an idea and the source of this idea is WICA. And uh, I think we need, we need to recognize that. Uh, for us as the ECOWAS Commission, uh, we like to pick the ideas from the practitioners and raise the idea to the multilateral platform nurture it to a stage where it is ready to take off and, and hand it over to where it rightly belongs, which is the private sector. That's the only vehicle for sustainability. The closing session included a press conference where Mr Alfred Brymar and other high-level officials from ECOWAS answered questions by members of the local and regional print, internet and television media. Now, the process started with an engagement with EU, BISCLIM, leading to the establishment, the appointment of a consultant led by Mr. Umar Sek to drive this whole process. And we, we needed to just ask and answer one question and confirm our already existing belief that having this agency would be useful. <laughs>